The bad thing about a lot of people's career is they get into something because they think this is what I do and they stay in it because of invisible handcuffs, whatever you, you know, there's a myopic view that I can only do what I've done before. Did you push record? Thanks so much for joining us again on our second act with Paige and Silka. I'm happy that Daryl Gurney is staying with us for another segment on life after 40, 50, and beyond. Uh, on our last segment, we discussed, Daryl, a very important topic, which is that we, you know, as we get into our second half or in, with on your platform, the back 40, that we, a lot of us go through awakenings and, and realizing that, you know, we're not happy, we're stuck but don't know how to move on. What we want to focus on today is if we have made that decision, and and we'll link to the last segment so people can kind of catch up on on what it's like to get to that point, but now we've made that decision. The practicality of it brings up a whole other side of issues. So help us understand how how to, to take those steps. You know what, I just came to my mind as soon as you said that was a, um, a quote by Helen Keller. Uh, Helen Keller said, life is either a daring adventure or nothing. And I think that's very relevant for what you're saying because look, um, as uh, at 40, 50 or 60, people get way reticent to take risks. Okay, it's just real easy being in the comfort zone. So to actually take on, as you said, that we're now at the point where we're going to make that move. We're going to move outside of that relationship. There's not the security that's always been there. There's a whole lot of unknown, right? Um, On the, I'm going to address it two ways. One on the theoretical side, and one on the practical side. On the theoretical side. In the back 40, we say that the first half was just R&D, research and development for what you came here to do and who you came here to be anyhow. So therefore, it's not actually reinventing. It's actually going to do what you came here to do. And so therefore, uh, being open that, oh, this is why I came versus I've got to try to hold together what I've put together. Well, that was all R&D. Now, what have you learned about yourself? What are you interested in? So let's even talk career, because that's going to be a big thing, right? Whenever someone maybe, you know, makes that choice to move on. Or, you know, can I make it on my own? And do I have what it takes and all of this stuff? So uh, the first half has given you a lot of opportunities to discover what you're passionate about. You know, Silka, you're a very different person right now than you were 20 years ago. Oh, totally, yes. <laughs> yeah. the, the things that you're passionate about, what you care about is very different. <clears throat> the bad thing about a lot of people's career is they get into something because they think this is what I do and they stay in it because of invisible handcuffs, whatever you, you know, there's a myopic view that I can only do what I've done before, Mm -hmm. but you're very different. And I believe life is about continuing to explore who you are and going with passions. Now, in the traditional model, and this is where I'll get into the practicality, in the traditional model of career change, people can only go get a job in something doing what they've done before, right? Because HR and, you know, everyone's with the checklist. Have you done this? Have you done this? Right now, that doesn't that doesn't apply to 20 year olds because 20 year olds haven't done anything. Right. So you just get them started. But yet what people fear is at 40, 50 or 60, um, if I do go back out to work, I got to go do what I've done before, which maybe doesn't turn me on anymore. Or how do I even get into doing what I've done before when I'm 40, 50, or 60, because guess what? We don't like to talk about it, but ageism oh, absolutely. Is, is something that exists, even though you know uh, you can't pin them on it. Now, here's the thing, though. All of those issues 
happen because people are used to how you and I grew up. How did you get a job? How'd you get your first job, Silka? Well, either my friends told me about a job or an opening, or you just went to, and, and you know, I was a waitress, so I applied at various places. Okay, good. A lot of times we looked in the newspaper. You remember newspapers? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Newspapers, you know, is that antiquated idea. But the thing is, you looked in the newspaper to see what jobs are open. That's how we grew up. You go look and see what's open so you can apply so that you can maybe get that job, okay? Now, here's the deal. Dr. Phil would say something like, how's that working for you? You know, applying for jobs. And I think the worst thing someone can do at 40, 50, or 60 if they're going to be making a career change or even going back to work, is applying for jobs. It's It'll do for your self-esteem what getting kicked in the head with a steel boot will do, okay? And because I do have a career uh, coaching background as well, um, I'm an advocate in, in that work for what I call a, a stealth or backdoor campaign. And so for any of your viewers who are watching, I just want people to be aware you don't have to go the old model in making a career change. And what a stealth or backdoor campaign looks like is this. Go start talking to people about what you're passionate about. Go start doing research on the things that really interest you. Get known by the people in those fields, not because you need a job, because people don't want to sit down and talk to people who need a job because they don't want to feel uncomfortable by saying, no, they can't help. But <clears throat> what you can do is you can reach out to people in a systematic way. And based on what you're researching, based on what you're passionate about, you can, number one, get known by lots of people. And Silka, you and I both know, people like to work with people they know and like. Yes. Right? Yes. So the question is, how do you get out there get known and liked? You don't get out getting known and liked by applying for jobs. You do get out getting known and liked by talking to people about what you're passionate about. Let me just give you a quick example so this isn't theoretical. Uh, one time, a woman who was actually over 50, she figured all she could do would be stay in marketing at another technology company because people are myopic. They think they can only do what they've done before. But what happened was, is I taught her this method. First, I got her very clear of her unique value. And then I thought, asked her, what are you passionate about? She was Jewish. She was always very into her culture, wanted to do something in Judaism, but she was used to big corporate America or anything. What we did was we got her out talking to people about what fascinated her. She ended up becoming the executive director of a nonprofit that trains bomb sniffing dogs for Israel. <laughs> Pups for peace. I bring up the point though, because what happens through the back door of relationships is it doesn't matter what you've done before. People give, you know, they, they open doors for the sweet opportunities that aren't advertised to people that they know and like. Number two, Ageism disappears because people can see your unique value. If you're going through the front door, you kind of get eliminated before people can even see that value. Plus, you're there trying to get something from them versus just out there connecting because you're doing research. So anyhow, that's just a that's a method. If, if, if people would like more, know more about that, if they go to Career Guy, which is my other uh, careerguy.com forward slash free. There's some free ebooks there that explain a little bit about this. No, terrific, terrific. Well, Daryl, we're uh, coming to the end of our segment again. Great, great point, especially on uh, you know dealing with ageism, because that that is that hangs over our head. And you know, as you said, you can't you know you're not that's not supposed to be happening, but it absolutely is, and people are very concerned with it. Uh, Anything else for our closing words on this segment? Well, <clears throat> how we started this segment was someone courageous enough to, to move on. All I will say is, and I've known this from personal experience uh, uh, with people I know very well, as well as lots of people I've worked with, is that when you are brave enough to, to face the fear and move through it, it becomes a phantom. You see that it was the fear itself 
versus what you're really capable of. And I think in the back 40, we're, what we're here for is to play our biggest game. That requires a lot of courage and standing up in the face of fear. Well, gr great point, Daryl. And we will link to all of your information so everybody can get your books on developing this stealth approach to either starting a new career or finding a job. And we will see you on the next segment of our second act with Paige and Silka. <music> So glad you were able to join us today. If you haven't already done so, please just take one second and subscribe to our channel. Button's right over here. And for more information about reinventing your life after 50, please visit our website, secondact.tv. See you soon.